Hi guys, I hope you good. I hope you super. I am blessed. Well, I was not ready to upload, but we do it for the glory of God. And I usually say my story is long. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention um, in my in my 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 videos is i've got elder kids you know i've got elder kids and i've got a cute beautiful grandchild as well so everything that i lay out there i lay out uh fully aware that my kids are aware of it because we we are a team, we talk. And today's video is something that is kind of painful, you know. Um, I want somebody today to look at me and believe that Jesus is able to break chains, Jesus is able to break bondages, and Jesus is able to break curses. And the Bible says we have been buried with him and have been raised with him through the power of the working God. If you look in the book of Colossians. And until you understand these words, you will not understand the death that you were in and him raising you and living through him by him. So... There are curses, there are bondages, there is spiritual death. But one finds solace in knowing that Jesus is able to, to take away all that for you. When I said um, somebody may think that it's as easy as ABC to, 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 to get away from all these things and they will not follow you. Yes, they will follow you. You know, um, I, I'm a woman that was not only scarred by childhood that is related to parents' separation and what so not. I was scarred because I have been, I've been multiple, like I'm a multiple rape um, survivor. And I came to realize when I was grown, when I was an old person, you know, or who, who God initiated into Sangomahood, that it has more to do with that spirit than, you know, God, God is not um, the author of evil and the author of confusion. No, no, but Satan is, you know. Everybody that has ancestral spirits is mostly attacked, even in that manner. You know, you must know that those people, even it's not every, I'm not saying everybody who's a rape victim is, is, has anything to do with ancestral worship, but that spirit is so evil that even bad things like that happen to you. And then later on, when they tell you, they'll tell you that, no, it, it was them coming out go luck coming out in anger in order for you to be initiated and perform the rituals for them to for you to do the right thing and then um uh, for somebody it will be like no 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 but yes it is so so and when um that thing happened thank god i was able to pass through all the rapes it I'm not going to sit here and say because I'm born again, um, I, I believe in the power of God, the power of the word, it doesn't hurt, it hurts. It hurts when somebody comes from nowhere and takes your innocence. And it hurts when it keeps happening. And you wonder, why, why me? Why me? You understand? And you look around, you're surrounded by women that have been raped. You know, rape is one of the things that 
I cannot put enough words to explain what it does to a woman, but it is one of the painful experience and traumas that anybody can can experience. You know, one of the things that made me more to be more eager in making sure that I I I I, I work to 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 do to fulfill my ministry in life and to listen to the call of God is the attacks I, I kept getting from from the enemy. You know you know when these ancestral spirits are not done with you, it's like the only painful time is when they touch your kids. You see? And I'm not crying because I think they're more powerful. Because they know they're not. And I want somebody to see that you are able to break curses and bondages. The most painful thing that has ever happened is when they tried me. You know, like I told you, it's been years, you know, it's been years, but they keep trying and they'll tell you, you know, they'll speak that this is what you're going to do. One day, out of nowhere, I have the sweetest kids you can ever think about. And then one day out of nowhere, same day, someone broke my son's nose. And then one evil, wicked man raped my child. I think that is the day I kind of lost it. And that is the day the so-called ancestors could have gotten me back. Because someone came and said, no, something's wrong. Go back to your goggles. I was like, oh, okay. At that point, I walked. I think I walked a distance that I don't know, trying to understand what's happening. Because if there's one thing that I hate, I'm sorry to say that in this world, is rape and a rapist. And I was like, God... At 15, I had this baby. People took my innocence. And other people, I, you have to explain yourself to people. And oh, I didn't know anything about relationships, you know. You, you now have to forcefully get into that level of, oh, people, they do this. You know, and you have to explain, you know, because you know nothing about these things. And your mom has to fight it on her own. And when you're about to be okay, you understand because she explains everything to you uh, with the changing of your body and everything. Three weeks after the birth of your child, she dies. By God's grace, you grow up. You see? It keeps happening. You know? You must remember, a 15-year-old is a baby. A 15-year-old is a baby. With a baby. A girl child. You know, psychologists would not do anything 
to a mother who tries to protect her child because everybody in her eyes is a rapist. You have to deal with your own mind. You know, I remember my sister at some point said, you have a problem. Because I used to lock my daughter inside the house. Like, my daughter would not, uh, was not allowed to go to the, to the store with other kids. Because I'd be like, no, someone might run after my child, pick my child, put my child on, and rape my child. And then, then it happens that you deal with the rape. You become a woman. You, you big. Everything is fine. Right. All that love, Sangoma, you name it. You get healed by God's grace. You attend your counseling sessions in order for you to deal with your trauma and everything. It happens. Even in other food. You know, it keeps happening. Is strong but now when it happens to your child you know at that point somebody would have said oh, no go back to being a sangoma uh you see your ancestors now trying you with your kids i'm like i think the best way is to talk to god you see to, to, to break the generational curse because I had to go back and search and my aunts have been raped, you know, and a lot, someone very close to me raped. And it's not Okay, rape makes me cry when I talk about it, but I need to be strong. What I'm saying to somebody is there are rapes that occur not because of... It, it, it's a generational thing that you need to break, you know, and you need to, to be protected, you know. You need to hide yourself under the shadow of God's wing. You know, and rape is not nice, guys. It is the only thing and the only word that changes me. And for somebody would be like, no, you, you, you can, you are healed. You, <laughs> we heal, but when we talk about it, it's something else. So I'm saying to somebody, meditate on the word of God to find your sanity and to break curses that follow you that you don't know where they're coming from, you know, because having been someone that works with dark forces, I know for sure that there are things that are men made you know there are things that I know are not things that would have happened if it went for certain things from behind and certain things that were sent out to a certain generation you know Today's episode is personal. It took a lot for me to understand that. First hand experience was my own family. It was not only rape. There are things that are not coming like, you know, regular mistakes of people, Alice and Ali, there are things that are placed on families to become generational. And you can be able to break that once you hide yourself under the shadow of God's wings. You know, with the rape issue, I didn't pray. You know, 
what I prayed for was, God, none of my daughter will become a mother at 15. None of my daughter's innocence will be stolen. Because of 15 is a baby. A 15-year-old cannot be a baby. So I spoke to God about it. And it didn't happen. He answers. And well, <laughs> I'm a grandmother, but at 22, I welcomed my grandchild, guys, um, <laughs> three months ago. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a grandmother. Okay. At 37, at 37, like I'm a grandmother. I know, I just say thank you, God. Yeah, but I'm a grandmother to a beautiful baby of mine that looks like mommy. Me, of course, not that other mommy. <laughs> so, um, there are things that I man made. My mom died when I was 15, like I'm saying. I'm the one that took my mom to the doctor at 15. The doctor looked at me, you know. You know, I remember the doctor looked at me like this and said, your mother has fully, fully blown it. No. Okay, fully blown it. I only wanted my mother's medication that day. Well, I felt that my mother is going to take medication and be okay, you know. And I was my mother's nurse prior to that. My sister and I were helping each other, you know, we're taking turns. Sometimes she's at work. I was literally my mother's nurse. I was washing her bed. So, <laughs> you know, God is awesome because I never contracted the disease then. And now I'm still... Uh, clean by God's grace and I'm not saying people that are HIV positive uh, they're still our loved ones and we love them I never contracted uh, any HIV uh, even then even now um, I was taking care of my mother without gloves I didn't know anything <laughs> you know then I had my little baby there my mother there, King, my mother, and all that. I grew up by my family. There was no funeral. Then one day, my mother died. You see, my mother died. I, I saw her. <laughs> I saw her. She died. We, um, I was looking at her, actually. They said, talk to your mom, because your mom was, she wanted you. So I talked to my mom, she had my voice. They actually said, I must talk to her in order for her to, to be freed. It's like she had, I don't know what they call it, little aloe, you know? She was <gasps> doing that. So uh, she had sent me somewhere, <laughs> then I come back, I find it like that. And they say, talk to your mom so that she hears that you're here with my sister, talk to her so that she goes. Then I talked to her, that's how she go. She went. And that was the first time we experienced that in our family. My mother died in 2000, three months down the line. My grandmother died a few months down. That was the beginning of funerals by my home. We actually buried each year. My family was finished. My mother's side. It all went sad, you know. It was a family that was known that they bury. We buried so much that my brothers, my siblings, and I were, ended up being the one helping to bury even our own cousins with my uncle, the last uncle that I have. 
we were like these were like 12 kids they were just going like that 12 kids they were all going my grandmother after my mom three few months down the line my uncles my aunt they were all going oh jeez then i became a sangoma <laughs> i found the root cause of all that it was one woman my uncle had married married into the woman that that one of my videos told you she threw she she hit me with bones you know that was a witch you know and i did not just go as a sangoma to say i want to find out what happened to my family i just had that thing that my family people were dying that's all then when i was in, in at school initiation school i had a dream about that woman the dream we were fighting and i beat her up mercilessly then i i went home when i arrived in my Ndumba, that thing came back that what you need to do is protect your family you know i stood day in day out trying to protect my family but what happened then shouldn't happen again and by god's grace it, it didn't happen like the way it used to happen it literally stopped you know we lost our cousin and my uncle okay my other uncle that one those are their reasons behind that but the funerals that we had prior to that were scary you know so i found again that it was that woman you know i called one of my aunts and i was like you know what for years you were saying this person is a witch this is what she did to me mina i had two incidents of this woman you know uh that i would detail in another video and I was supposed to just throw in an arrow, but I didn't do it that way. So I just said, okay, I'll just protect my home. The lady went mad. Taking off her clothes. She, she was eating her uh, feces. <sighs> Up until she died. She died a mad person. Like, she used to eat feces. She used to talk she used to get naked saying all the things that she had done because it was not only my family that she has she really really <laughs> worked against so guys with me being sangoma doing all that when i came to to to, to the knowledge of jesus i started to pray more for people you know and the protection i had as a sangoma uh, over things is not the protection that I I feel even now around me and my family honestly it's something different and when somebody tries something bad it's like I feel that God has handled you know God has handled it and with God things are permanent you know David says he's our protector he's our fortress he's our refuge he says he will not let um you know he doesn't sleep no slumber he will never let our foot sleep that's just how much god loves us and when i talk about these things <laughs> anyway it is possible for you to commit any generational curses to the lord for you to break bondages by scripture if the bible says we have been buried with him raised with him through the power of the working god and in him we live you know in you know it is no longer us who live but him so if the word of god says him in us so it's it's like that he will handle things for us you don't need to fight anybody you just call me things that you know like i was telling you narrating my story it's painful of course there are things that you will think about and they're painful there are things that you remember exactly they happened and you say god please handle this one 
It's a disturbance. It's a hindrance. It's, it's in my mind. It's heavy. It's a burden. And if God sometimes in your family uh, puts a burden by his spirit in your heart to pray about it, put it to God. God is able to handle that. Uh, we'll talk more about this. Yes, today was just emotional. Yes, it's normal. It's normal. It's normal. It's normal family. We, 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 we always remember, you know, and yeah, I love you guys. Yes, I love you. I cannot love you like God. God loves you more. So please, there are a lot of people that have a lot of generational curses and generational bondages. And I will upload a video that I was supposed to upload that speaks of this specifically on how to break them. Um, I love you. God loves you more.